This podcast is brought to you by our partners at 8 Star Energy. 8 Star Energy, a clean energy company, leading the future of portable and renewable energy. To find out more, follow them on Facebook at 8 Star Energy. Sorry, boys, I'm having me locked down beers. I'm sorry. You're allowed, yeah. mate. That's allowed. what we're here for. You know, Danny said to me, he goes, should I pick up a six-pack so that I get on Big Z's level? <laughs> I was like, you're welcome to. <laughs> If uh, I'll see how it goes for the first 10 minutes, then I'll, I'll go yeah. get the whiskey. Might need a hook in, yeah. I want attacking purpose for football all the time. Now we're going to have backs against the wall and we're going to fight, and we're going to fight hard. You've got to show me all the guts and all the determination you've got in your body. You've got to inspire me. A marvellous kick. That's as good as you'll ever see. And foot player back in front. From inside the centre square, boys kick the goal! Boys kick the goal! From inside the centre! Hey brothers and sisters and all in between, welcome to Danny Boyd, a podcast about the greatest football club in the known universe, that is the Footscray Football Club, trading as Western Bulldogs. Uh, I'm Danny McGinley of course, and uh, with me is a man who didn't play this year, even and I didn't get a stat, but I was just too excited about this. I don't know if you boys have heard, they've called off the VFL season and the Bulldogs are on top. I'm claiming that. That's another premiership. Champions of Victoria. Yep, that's, I mean, we can do that, yep. That's do right, it. that's right. Champions again. It's not the first time the VFL have gotten off to a good season and, and got out uh, victorious, Danny, is it? We've uh, we've been pretty successful in that competition over the last few years, but I think they only played Mate, six look, games or something this year. The great thing about the VFL, people don't realise this, is we won the flag in 1923, 1924, and then, of course, joined the big, the other league. So we are on that two, you know, back-to-back, and then the first season we came back was 2014, won the flag again. That's a three-peat over 90 <laughs> years. <laughs> well, me and, sh- me and our, our esteemed guest did play a few games. Let's bring him in. It's, it's the two together. We've got Shane Biggs with us this evening. Yeah! How are you, Shana? Yeah! Good boys, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Um, just before we start, I'd like to weigh into the de- you know the debate that's going online about the podcast, and you know I'm heavily in your <laughs> corner over Bobby's one. I haven't been invited on that yet. Um, your email, your email, your email to me to get me in this chat went straight to junk mail, so I'm I'm not too sure about that. What you want to read of that? But <laughs> well, they um, had they had Rowan Smith on today, uh, Big Z. So maybe they're slowly working their way down the backman list, and they'll end up with you eventually. <laughs> I thought you're going to say working their way down the barrel. We're trying to start a beef with the Barclay Street podcast, just to you know how how wrestlers and rappers they it helps their career. When they start a beef, and so we're trying to do this. Problem is, Easton Wood and Boff Murphy are two of the loveliest guys in the world. They're not having a bar of it, those pricks. <laughs> yeah, look, that's all right. You've got me now, so don't worry. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> there, there was a. Um, I don't know if you remember this the same where's, way that where's I do. Shane. Tommy. Where's, oh, Tommy, Tommy's Tommy got terrible internet, so he'll oh. disappear. But he can still hear us, and we can still hear him. Yeah, you want me to hotspot you, Tommy. <laughs> the internet's not quite as good at my folks' house, mate, as it used to be. Living in Albert Park. Um, Shane, I don't know if you remember it the same as I do, but I remember you loving Bobby Murphy and Bobby Murphy having a specific shine to you over the years. Is that true or false? What happened there? Yeah, no, we really were. I think early on I got I got to the club and um, I was a bit all at sea, to be honest. I'd come from Sydney and I left a young guy and come to Bulldogs you know, mid twenties, but I felt young still from sort of, you know, just the way it had worked out up in Sydney and st- struggled to get in the team and that. And um, Bob sort of sensed that I think. And um, Bob's a fun guy, obviously, body and that you boys know, like he's grouse. And um, he took me under his wing a bit, similar position. Um, and you know, he got me close to his family and that, which was grouse. So um, he was he was really good to me. Bobby. Well, it might be not that well known, Shane, but me and you actually probably we played a couple of games against each other up in Sydney in our first year when you were playing at the uh, the Bloods. But, oh, the Battle of the Bridge. Yeah, yeah. I the never Bob, got a kick. Yeah. I never. I never got a kick. Did you? I don't know. Were you getting a kick at that stage, Shane? Because I wasn't. <laughs> probably not, mate. Well, probably yeah. That was when you guys just started and. Um, we had a pretty young mob as well. But, yeah, no, nah, I was struggling to find it, I think, early on. We'd both come from the east side, the east side of Melbourne. And do you, i, I got to ask you about this, Shane, because I've actually met Ryan O'Keefe since and done a bit of work with him, and he's a ripping fella. But at this stage, right, 
the Giants and the Swans had a pretty strong rivalry in the twos. And um, Ryan O'Keefe had finally finished basically his illustrious career in the <laughs> Swans ones and had taken up a Durex commercial. And basically the Durex commercial was to ha- like to commit to having um, intimate relations with his wife every night for a month or something. Oh, what? <laughs> and then and then we played you guys at um at the SCG what? in the twos game and Jacob Townsend was just going so hard at Ryan O'Keefe. It was one of the like oh, it was a wild game. I thought you would have remembered. Oh, that. Is this a is this an internet stunt or is this a, an actual TV that was on in Sydney of Ryan O'Keefe just saying I'm going to shag my wife every <laughs> night for a month? I, I think it was like a um, just a, a sponsorship. To be honest, I need wow. actually. Uh, I just remember like oh, it was a big topic that, of conversation at the Giants at the time. That's an odd thing because of all things Ryan O'Keefe's known for, I wouldn't, I could not picture him. <laughs> You know, getting down to business with anyone. So, uh, <laughs> what's uh, the link there? His nickname was Rhino. Rhino's uh, horns, horny. Is that? That's the only link I can do here. His nickname is Rock. If that helps. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it writes itself, mate. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I haven't seen that, Tommy. To be honest, and that's going to be the first thing I do once I get off this to try and locate that. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I'm fascinated there by so the Giants and the Swans had a rivalry in the reserves, but surely and was that all over the? Is that because did the Giants come in as a reserves team before yep. a seniors team? Yeah, so they didn't. Tommy, they started sort of in the um, Neefield, didn't they? Yeah, I reckon they started in 2012 or something or 11 even. And yeah, it was like on, Jeremy Cameron yeah. and Tim Golds and. Um, Forgive me if I Dylan Shield probably was in there. Yeah, yeah, would have been, they're yeah. really good players. Um, and then they came through, but because like our two sides stacked, and so was the Swans, so yeah, yeah. a pretty good battle. And then in the ones, we just get absolutely torched every yeah, single so time. Yeah, so it was more in the twos. <laughs> yeah, it was more in the twos. Yeah. So you guys played against each other? Yeah, we were of, probably didn't go near each other. I wasn't really going near opponents then. I still never really was, but I would have run away. <laughs> Would have played near Tommy, I reckon. Oh, I wasn't getting a kick, mate, either. So wherever the ball was, I wasn't at that stage of my career. <laughs> and what are you doing now, Bigsy? You are the you're the undisputed king of um, of social media. In fact, uh, we've got a lot of listener mail uh, coming up, but one of them uh, was uh, from Chris, uh, who pointed out that you know you've got the legacy, you know the 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 never forget goal and everything. One of the most likable players in that bulldog side, but it's probably not going to be your lifetime's legacy because you're just so so much funnier on social media. <laughs> I don't know how to oh. quite take that, but I'll take it. No, it's, um, <laughs> more do you, more do you, the answer to your question is I'm an apprentice plumber, so I don't think that's – I think that's going third in that list. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a close third. But, no, nah, it's going all right. I'm starting to sort of half know what I'm doing, I think, but – who do you work for? Can we, we'll give it a plug and then a plug. if people want Bigsy to come around to, you know, fix your toilet, he'll do, do it. Do you want to fix your toilet? Yeah. You, uh, after hours, you can also ring me to fix your toilet if you want. <laughs> what, what's the company called? Uh, H&R. All right, sweet. H&R, so yeah. We're Where's fully dressed though, Shane? Are you, are you still out west? I'm in Maribyrnong. Oh, out in the wild you. west, Tommy. I, I want to understand this obsession you have with cooking hot dogs. That's my biggest <laughs> thing that I need to know about because I've seen it a few times on your internet and it is, uh, it's one of my great pleasures to go and have a geese at on a Tuesday night. I know. You'd think I would know how to cook them by now. They always put them up and they were splitting that. They look, they look like – I don't know what they look like. I don't want to say what they look like on, on this <laughs> podcast. But, um, no, I don't know, Tommy. It started – I don't know because – to be honest, I'm sort of back into footy. It took me, I don't know if you're the same, Tommy, it, it took me a couple of years to even watch a game again. I don't know, it wasn't wasn't through the, you know, it was just that I sort of fell a bit out of love with it. And um, so this year I've sort of fallen in love with it again. And I used, we used to do hot dogs at the footy. So I've got them going again when I watch a game. So that's that's where that comes from, right? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, Shane, we finished about the same time. And from my memory, both of our last seasons, at the Bulldogs were pretty similar in the sense that it was like I had a back injury, your hips were absolutely destroyed. Yeah, um, so yeah. We were playing twos. We didn't look like we were going to get out of the twos. Uh, we'll probably get yeah. yelled at for not being quite where they wanted us to be. And then eventually yeah. we were like, right, we'll go do something else. 
Right, right. it's hot dog time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it. as a as a amateur enthusiast chef, what are you, what are you doing, uh, Big Z? I'll see if I can help you out here. You are you keeping them at a basic simmer? The roll's got to be super fresh. That's the secret to a good hot dog. Yeah, that I'd like to think I'm getting super fresh, but they could probably get fresher. <laughs> and also, <laughs> also keeping it as sim is a that's a good that's a good point because I reckon they're boiling pretty hard, pretty chaotic. <laughs> oh, yeah. nah, nah, use the, use the small burner, mate. Don't 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 go. It's not a wok, mate. I'm just I'm just in and trying to get in and. Get in and get them done, but I'm trying to go a bit quick, I think. Oh, so, so you're oh, cooking the way you lot. played your footy. You're just hitting them hard. You're just running at like this, 110%. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shane. I can't, no, there's plenty of things not, to work on, Tommy. You know that. You know, even off the field, mate, and that's one of them, obviously. Yeah, plenty of things to work on, mate. Plenty of things to work on. Uh, mate, Boydie, I've got uh, a question for you. Boydie, yeah, I want to know, what was your, what, what was, we've talked about with, uh, with some other players, the first impressions you make at a club. Like if you're, if you're a first year player, you want to kind of keep your head down and not draw attention to yourself, unlike Toby McLean did in his first training session. Mm. Uh, what, what was Bigsy doing in his, because he, I can't imagine him being a shy retiring type. Um, he actually, he came in the exact same time as me and to, to be honest, was actually pretty low key up until. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? The first time when you drew attention to his thumb stand. Here we go. Party. This is what I want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the, um, the bullshit. That was like the first time I'd really seen Shane. Because Shane presents, like, I mean, we're not going to record the vision on this, Shane, but you're sitting in a nice, like, preppy Tommy Hill finger. You've got the slick bags, <laughs> the nice, like, Nordic tops and hats. But he, deep down, deep down, he's a kid. I'll take a photo summer, for socials. Here we you go. Know? And, and so when he presents at the club, I'm like, this guy's straight as an arrow. He's just, you know, he's very respectable. He's actually from Warrandyte. Like, I feel a bit of a connection. <laughs> anyway, and then Shane managed to um to have a, a, a few beers at the uh, Christmas function and everyone worked out just how fun he was, which was, um, which was great. And after that... Never looked back. You would have played most of the games in your first season, I reckon, Big Z, wouldn't you? I played, yeah, played definitely the second half of them. Um, I, 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 just to add on to that story, and I've, I, I, you know, <laughs> Hang me, on, I, yeah, I want more info because you know just me, saying Tommy, he was funny is not enough here. You know I want to know what was I he remember, doing. I remember a lot when I have a few drinks. I'm usually pretty, you know, a bit of a stand up guy. But apparently, I, we've <laughs> only been there. We've only really been there a month or two. Um, and apparently, Brent Montgomery, who was an assistant then. <laughs> <laughs> was, was telling me to calm down, you know, and he was telling me to sort of, um, if I could sort of leave, it was sort of that type of arrangement. And apparently, I wow. apparently I said, like, who are you, mate? Who are you to tell me that? Who are, like, who's a random? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and so oh, I, I just got there and I, I hadn't said much to anyone and a few boys saw that happen and they thought, what's going on here? <laughs> it, was a bit yeah. it was the um, it was the great icebreaker show because after that, it's like, <laughs> That's what Christmas parties are for. You're supposed to just like, you know, break through, break the ice, get through all of the uh, the uncomfortability of the preseason, and then just like dive into the next part. And you certainly made an impression that day. What's the difference between a, a club Christmas party, a, you know, a playing group Christmas party and Mad Monday? Um, Half of them. Right. Mad it's Monday, like, just the playing group. Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah, coaches? It's, it's- it's it's good. It's it is funny, like Tommy said, it is after. But with a lot of the Christmas parties, it starts with good intentions, and it, the Mad Monday creeps in towards about sort of three four p.m. <laughs> and you're just hoping that the coaches and that leave pretty immediately, or else it's going to get pretty chaotic. I, I, I always found Shane the worst bit was like um, it's like there is like this tipping point at four o'clock where the admin and the players like start mingling, and you're like, I know you, you like are in the you know the merchandise shop and you're on a table <laughs> dancing why are you doing that and, and it, i mean this this happens a fair bit they oh hey hey and you go oh g'day i'm tom and they go yeah i know who you are and it's like i don't know <laughs> yeah. who you are <laughs> oh 100 percent, 100 percent. and then there was the added layer because later on then obviously we had the the aflw the afl um main footy club boys vfl Staff, mate. We there was four hundred people. Yeah, there was four hundred people in the in the railway that day. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. So there's a whole other layer of issues there. <laughs> 
But Bigsy, how did you keep a? Because you seem so naturally funny, and and like I can't imagine you playing it straight laced for the first year. How did you? How did you keep a lid on that? Well, being like that got me six games at Sydney, so I had to sort of start off. <laughs> <laughs> I had to start off with something else for the start, but now. Nah, Oh, just to get to know the boys, you know, I just wanted to – I wasn't ever going to hold it back, but um, just wanted to gain some respect on the training field in that first, I think, and Tommy probably is the same, and that's what you want to do, get the respect quickly, and then you can start carrying on like a pork chop. Just to clear something out, Danny, the first year, this is four weeks after he got to the club. So. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't 12 months. It was four weeks. Right. Sorry. I got the wrong Christmas. I got it mixed up. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking of this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your best friend at the Swans? Best friend at the Swans? Um, I had a few. I was really close with Tommy Mitchell. Nice. Um, and Dan Hannabury took me under when I got there. He was a good fella to me. He knew I was Yeah, that, that story checks out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Shane uh, yeah, was but... a Yarra Valley schoolboy and... Where Dan Hunterbury, he went to Xavier, so he had some things in common, I guess. Yeah, so we were the boys that, you know, used to wear blazers, so we sort of um, (laughs) buddied up. um, That's right. There was a a good group of boys at the Swans, to be honest. I got along really well with all of them, but, um, yeah, then I, you know, it's coming down the dogs. That team was so good when you were up there, though, Shane, from memory. They were winning a lot lot of footy. Because when did you get there? 2010 or something? 2012, when they won the flag. (laughs) Oh, Mate, wow. Yeah, they they didn't get injured either. Those those hard bastards. <laughs> yeah, but then I actually do have a question, Shane, because this is something that I do hear a lot from this. Like I heard a lot of the time. Obviously, don't hear it anymore because the preseason is a thing of the past. But there was this like massive um, uh, reputation of the Swans that their preseasons were just mental, just in- incredibly difficult. It, was it a lot easier when you came down to the Dogs to make a big difference? It it really was. Like by the end of the Dogs pre-season, it was just a different way they trained, but by the end, you still felt really good. But the Swans, it was very, you know, balls down and it was, um, you know, six 1K time trials and you had to be- beat or equal your last one. So stuff like that, it was real real old school stuff. But um, yeah. But by, by the time the season started, I was pretty cooked. So it was, yeah. yeah it was... Luckily, you were, you were always a good runner, though. That must have helped a bit, Shane. Oh, it helped a bit when I didn't want to do my pre-season program. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Shane was notorious um, from my memory where they'd be like, everyone had sort of mingled together before the first pre-season running session. They'd be like, oh, how you going? You fit? Yeah. And, and everyone would be like, yeah, yeah, been doing a bit. Oh, I reckon I'll get my time. And Shane, I would say the same thing and he'd go out there and he'd just get his time and he'd come back in and he'd be like, boys, haven't run since we left. <laughs> he did have this amazing will and ability to uh, to get his time in the time trial, and then he, and then he'd be like, he'd be like, man, my quads are sore, and he'd like miss training like two days later. Having kicked a footy since the last game, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what are you supposed to do in in your off season? So you get six weeks off, and there's we've talked about this that horrible thing where they say you better come back and get a personal best in the yeah. in the running, which just sounds hellish and unnecessary. But so what do you what do they expect of you? Like realistically, like you're not going to train every day. You got to have some time off. Well, I, I would imagine that uh, it's vastly different at the Dogs than it was at the Swans. Um, my so my first preseason experience at the Giants was I turned up and I'd never done a three k time trial. I don't think, or well, I'd gotten like twelve minutes, which is not good. And then that they said to me that I need to knock like a minute off my time trial by like three weeks later when I got back, <laughs> and I was like, mate, I didn't sleep the whole off season, stressing so much about getting this tire because like a minute for me at that stage, especially in a three k, I was like. Oh, I'm, I'm cooked. I rock up first day of preseason. It's like 35 degrees, and we're on an out track, and I'm cooking. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do this. Anyway, <laughs> I got the time, and then I was ruined for the next week. So it was kind of pointless. But um, the dogs, they weaned away from that, like sort of really crappy, you know, ruin your off season stuff. Yeah, um, yeah compared to the Swans yeah. and the, the Giants, I think. Was that Bevo or was it like 
Has that always been a bulldogs thing? I suppose you don't really know. I think it, I think it was a I think it was a bit of both. Like, but the the fitness stuff and that you know, by Maddie Innes and that by the end, not even by the end through the whole thing, it was more you know there's a lot of personal programs and a lot of more realistic stuff. You know they weren't trying to ruin blokes, especially when they got back. You know you'd be in different groups and that to get you through. I mean not not in a soft way, but it was more just to know that young guys with their bodies and that, they'll be cooked by the start of the year. Like it's... Well, when me and Shane got to the club, um, Danny, be, uh, Bevo hadn't got there until like just before Christmas. And so... Yeah, so we had no coach. It was, we, yeah. We had Justin Cordy, our fitness guy, running the place for like three or four weeks. And then as soon as Bevo got there, got there, he was like, you guys need to learn how to play football. Like, none of you, like, you guys can't play. You've yeah. never, play, you've never wow. played together. You guys are shit. <laughs> you guys suck. So for like... Ten weeks straight, all we did was just train football and play football. Like we didn't, we barely good, did yeah. any running. We like, no, he was just like every single bit of training, you're going to have a football in your hand. You're either going to be kicking it, marking it, or kicking it. You're like bouncing playing it, yeah. Him. So that was See, massive. That's not the that is not the narrative. If you watch, you know, like Outsiders and all these documentaries, the ride about Bevo just coming in and changing. I don't, I don't think anyone's ever pointed out the bombshell that his first line was, "You guys are shit at football." <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it, it was more so, it wasn't like you guys can't play. It was like you guys can't play the way that you need to to play the modern game. Like it was just yeah, like yeah. everyone was like super defensive, fundamental, one-on-one. And he was like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to let Shano not play on a man for the next <laughs> two years and then we'll be fine. That was basically his whole game plan. It worked really well. <laughs> Well, because wasn't that McCartney's whole thing? I know you guys didn't have McCartney, but he was very contested ball, one-on-one, defensive. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, when I when he presented to me um, when they were doing the trade process, he was saying, like, you know, we're very fundamental. We've got all these, like, really hard players. Our midfield's amazing. And then Bevo got to the club and he was like, Liam Pickin, you're not a tagger. Shane Biggs, like, you're going to play with first footy or, you know, you'll get your opportunity. Joel Hamling, suddenly, like, a, you know, a, a really good defender and sort of just turned all these players who'd been either forgotten by other clubs or at least that the dogs been, like, typecast into one position to say, you yeah. got the freedom to play. Like, Matty Boyd's a great example. Bob Murphy's a good example. Um, like, these guys could play, but it was like, you've been limited up until now. Have some freedom. And even, like, Dale Morris, like, they, they used to get told not to get the ball. But Bevo said, if you're going to play, you've got to be an option, you know. So he improved his skills and got handball receives even and stuff. So it yeah. was just a big change. And, and as we not met... Saying, not, not saying I condone that, Boydie. If you're listening, <laughs> if you're listening, Moz, you should have still never got the footy, mate. <laughs> never so. got the <laughs> we, we interviewed Moz. Bigsy, and the first, like the, one of the things that I said to her, I was like, Dale Morris mastered the 20 meter kick and nothing yeah. else. He was just like, I mean, on offense. Somehow looked like he was dropping it with his wrong hand or something. I was yeah. doing something with it. Yeah. He gave a lot of handballs to you, Shane, from memory. That's all I can remember. I, I was running behind him going, don't kick, don't kick. <laughs> Yeah, Shano would just see the ball, like Moz just going to get an intercept and his eyes would light up. He's like, I'm getting a oh, TP mate. here for sure. I'd, mate, I'd, I'd, run, I'd run from the wing and I'd be on, I'd be on the vision <laughs> during the week. Mate, this is the right running pattern. Run past about four blocks. You were known for your, uh, your gut running, Shane. That's certainly the case. Did you, um, did you find it really difficult um, once your hips actually started to give way? Because I, I actually remember being in conversation either with or near you and Bally, who Chris Bell, the physio, talking. And he'd be like, mate, your hips are like, they're, they're, do, they're a disaster. You need to fix it. And Shane would be like, <laughs> mate, if I get through the rest of the games, I'm going away on holiday. I'm not getting surgery. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was adamant. He got two years in a row, he got away with it. <laughs> mate, I can't believe you say that. I, I, I didn't get surgery just so that I could go to Europe with red and that. <laughs> Oh, oh, so funny. That's funny. I can't believe you heard that combo. That's funny. Like, I, rec- I actually reckon I reckon I heard it after we won the flag. You're like, yeah, no, it was. I'm not getting surgery. I just won a flag. I'm going on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. so good. Oh, those are the days. God, we had a premiership hangover after that. That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still. Tommy and Tommy are still drunk. 
Oh, well, how was the trip though, Bigsy? Where, where did you go? <laughs> oh, mate, all through Europe, spent a lot of time in Berlin and that. It was bloody ace. <laughs> did you get? Do you get recognised? Once you've just won the flag, do you get recognised in like you know Latvia or anything? Or? Do you want to hear the funniest story? This is this no, 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 no. <laughs> no we, were in, we, were at a, we were at a festival in um, Amsterdam. This big sort of rave. You can, be, you can barely see in there. This bloke comes up to me like a bit of t- I don't know if it's tongue in cheek, but he comes up to me because I used to post a lot about my housemate, the redhead guy who was known as the chef around here. Um, and he goes, "Hey, mate, do you reckon you could take a photo of you know the chef from Bigsy's Instagram to me?" And he's pointed at my mate. <laughs> and we're on the dance. We're on the dance floor listening to like bloody I don't know who it was some some dance act. And he and he's I'm getting taking a photo of my housemate and this random dude. It was oh, it was really it's cool. Extraordinary. It's when you know you made it. And then, and then all, all within an, another couple of weeks, we've seen Libra playing footy in Vietnam. That's basically yes. what happened. What a, what a time that, to be alive. That's the sequel. Like, the outside is that great documentary by Adrian Brown, but we really need to see that off-season. Like, you know, sure, we, oh. you, we, didn't, we didn't back it up. We didn't make finals for a couple of years. So let's see you enjoy it. That's what I would love to see. Just a montage of your holiday snaps. Yeah. yeah there's, there's, there's surely some hidden footage somewhere of the of – of the group's um, adventures, I think. Well, what, uh, what did you do that summer? I had surgery a week ah, after. Ah, no! <laughs> sucked in. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so this is why we had a hangover, because 16 of us had surgery and four of them did it. And the four we needed to get surgery, like Big Z, it's just like, I'd rather go to, I'm going to, I'm going to Berlin to go to EDM or whatever you were going to. <laughs> I had two surgeries in three weeks. I was in bed the whole time. It was horrible. Oh. See, see, Tommy, I blame you, mate. I blame yeah. you. Yeah. I should have just pretended my shoulder was fine. I just kept going. <laughs> oh, that just was go true. and surf. That's all. So, who, who are your good? You're obviously good mates with with Red Path. Who who are your other? You know, obviously Boyd is your best friend. Boydie's who are your other friend. mates at the club? Who do you uh, fond? Or who are you um, still in touch with? I guess. Oh, I'm still in touch with Jongy a lot, Dell. Um, close with Hunts, um, there's heaps Lib, um, but like Tom, Tommy would probably attest to, it was a pretty tight group. You know, I haven't speak to Pico and guys like that who are, I was going to say a lot older than me, but they're not anymore. I mean, not, <laughs> not that much older than us. <laughs> You're way older than me, mate. You're, I'm only 26. <laughs> mate, he always had kids. So, you know, anyone with a kid, then you don't have yeah. kids. You think they're just like your dad. Um, but now nah, Pico and you know all these guys, we still we still talk a lot too. So um, yeah, I don't want to miss anyone because it'll be flat. But I, I do, I do agree, sir. I mean, the um, it, it, we weren't just close; we were the weirdest bunch of characters. There were so many different types of people in that group, and yeah. from like Matty Boyd, who was like an absolute like a nutcase to deal with in how mate. hard he wanted to train and hurt people and like think he would have caught the worst of it as a back mate if you if you brush past his locker game day and like move one of his things so it wasn't folded properly he would go ballistic right <laughs> and then on the other end of the spectrum you've got like shane and you know red and dal like all these guys i mean dal was like with serious game day but you know loved having a laugh and we all wanted to have a good time during the week and it was um it was a wonderful part of uh of that group. Shane, I actually do want to ask you what what's the secret in terms of getting back into the footy side of things, and, and what does that mean? Have you been watching the games and really? I've seen you in the scarf and doing your famous yes. dance and your dance. Oh move. yeah, actually, I just remembered. I sat behind you, Big Z. Yeah, you game did. This yeah, year, and I just was so impressed the amount that you drank. <laughs> unless, unless you were pouring uh, like proper coke into those Jim Beam cans, <laughs> and you were just faking it, that was, was just oh, um, yeah, you know. I was faking it. I think. Yeah, <laughs> so you, you're back. You're back uh, in though, Shane. You're, you're fully immersed. You're you're 100. percent You've been watching the game on the weekend. I saw that you were thrilled with the win. What's um what's yeah. happening? Yeah. So like like I said, it took me a little while, but I don't know something flicked this year and. Watching it, you know, you get your. I'm on the ride now, and I'm get angry when they something happens and that. So I'm fully invested now again. Um, I started going to some games, obviously, but we can't at the moment. But yeah, I don't know what it is, mate. You can you see your mates out there now, and I, you know, you feel for them and that. So that's what's got me back. I just, and probably just watching the footy. I didn't turn it on for two years. Yeah, it's like there's enough um, new people out there now. I'm like, I don't know any of these young kids, and they're all really. Yeah. Like we used to be, like we were on a big side, but like 
you've got like five of these blokes in the forward line who like would have been the smallest blokes in our team for the entire yeah, the of the footy club. And, so, and it gets to the point, you get to the point where you're watching it going, there is no way in hell I could literally be running around. It looks so oh, hard. So no that way. probably helps as well going, I'm just, I'll am just i be useless. So it's good just yeah, watching that. <laughs> so so Gia, Gia had this famous thing, um, Daniel Gia and Sir when he was the forwards coach for me, he had this thing taped on his desk, which was like, never forget how hard the game is. Because he'd obviously okay. retired and gone straight into it and was still pretty fit. As soon as I finished, I was like, I am so far off the pace here. Yeah. I couldn't do this. I, I would need I would need three years of preseason to get back to anywhere near yeah, yeah, yeah. to keep up with them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that that probably helped as well, I think. Yeah. So yeah. Shane, how long do you think till Boydie starts actually watching the games live and not just checking the scores? Oh, is that is that I, a watched, thing, is I watched it on the weekend. I watched oh, every did minute you? On, Yes, I watched every minute on the weekend. It must be his internet, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you an out, Tommy. I'm giving uh, you an out, mate. I, I can't handle two things, Shane. I can't handle um, the commentary. I just can't handle yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That really gets me. Um, and I need to get back in the habit of just like, okay, this part of the week, it's a Saturday afternoon this week. This is when the footy's on. I'm going to watch it. Because I like kind of watch from a distance and then like zoom in and out because it's hard. No, I don't know it? why. don't know why yeah. it's, it's really hard to watch at times. But, yeah, frustrates me. I don't know why that is, but um, too many. I'll take mis- another promotions. flag for him to get into it. We'll see. Yeah, be. let's do a quick uh, preview of the. Uh, of, do you reckon <laughs> we got hope against the Lions? Like we, I don't, I can't remember. We the last time we won at the Gabba was like I think it was like 2017 when they were rubbish and we were less rubbish, and still they put it to us. Like we were the reigning premiers, and I think they were coming last, but we still had to fight for it. Yeah, Have you got any fond memories of the Gabba? <sighs> Not particularly. I never, I've never, i never played there, I don't think. Or maybe, no. actually, maybe I've played there. Can't I don't think I've ever one, I don't think I've ever won up there, mate, if that's what you're asking. Um, yeah. Uh, no, they, what do I, I, think, right. I think it's the battle of the two teams who are a bit underdone in their forward line, basically, by the looks of it. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon they're probably they're, they're probably pretty gettable, I reckon. Leading up to the finals, I thought they were nearly the team to beat, but they... Look a bit more wounded at the moment, so there we go. <laughs> yeah. okay. It doesn't help, Danny, that we're stuck in Tasmania until like the day before the game. Yeah, what's with that? So they've got to then fly up Friday night and stay in your room. Yeah, so I think that's the reason why they're still in Tassie. It's like in Tassie, you're allowed to like walk on a footpath, and in Brisbane, you're not allowed to walk outside your room. So it's like let's just leave them outside for a week. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the protocol at, at this stage is that from the Queensland government? Or is that from the AFL? Like, are they surely you've been in? They've been in Tasmania for over a week. They don't have coronavirus, or is that the AFL saying, "Hey, don't catch it," you know, because Queensland might have some. Oh, uh, D- Danny, <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah, asking. No me and Tommy's Shane just, Biggs. Tommy's just an ex-footballer, mate. <laughs> <laughs> mate I can't, put it this way: I can't imagine that it's. Um, I can't imagine that it's the AFL making up the rules, but it could be. I don't know. Um, they're Who all knows? Like, maybe here you go, Danny. I actually reckon this is what it is. Whoever wins is going to end up in Perth. That's the problem. Ah, yes. And okay. Yep. The Perth restrictions have been so tight. Oh, maybe yeah, that's yeah. It. that makes sense. Uh, see, look, see, this is why I ask you things. You're smart, mate. <laughs> You You asked me about like geopolitical policy on like a global (laughs) pandemic on a Wednesday night with Shane Biggs. You're asking a lot of That's fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. But okay, but in all seriousness, should Nicola Sturgeon call a second independence referendum in Scotland? (laughs) And would that affect them rejoining the EU? You had you had met Nicola Sturgeon. Yes. What a name that is. Oh, she's great. (laughs) What a name. She's exactly what you're picturing a Nicola Sturgeon to look like. Uh, <laughs> oh, they said Nicholas Sturgeon. Yeah, I thought oh, no, Nicholas Nicholas a... too. <laughs> nah, Nicola. She's like... What, what, um... what do you think, Danny? Are we going to win? What do I... I'm always, I'm always filled with posimism, which is the equal parts of optimism and pessimism. Like, uh, I was... When we played the Crows... I was like, nah, lids off. We got this. We, this is, we should win the grand final. 
comfortably. I'm going to feel good about this. I'm not going to worry. You know, 2016 and every other year of my life, I'm all like, oh, don't jinx it. Don't upset the footy gods. And I was like, nah, stuff it. We should, I want to enjoy this. I want to, you know, and then it went to shit. So that, that is all my fault. Um, but uh, I'm not, do what I really hope. I hope if we do win. Now, you guys are a bit younger than me, so you might not remember this and you weren't Bulldogs fans growing up. 1997, we had the heartbreaking prelim loss to the Crows. 98, we have a, we get thumped by the Crows, but it's equally as heartbreaking. 99, we go out in straight sets. We lose to the Eagles at the MCG in a squally wind, and then we lose to the Lions in Brisbane. And Alistair Lynch does this thing. He does the choking symbol like to, mm. to Scott West. A few of the others, you chokers. And it was fair enough we were choking, but it was, yeah, absolutely heartbreaking. I really hope Riley West gets picked. And then, because Brisbane oh. have been terrible in finals. They've won one final. The last three years, they've been dominant. They go out. He does the choking sign back to them. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? That would, that's, pretty, that's pretty poetic. I like that. What's yeah. your per- I don't know about you, Shane, but my... Get Libba to do it. Just get Lib to do it if he doesn't play. Yes. Yeah. That's right. I don't know about you, Shane, but my first memory of Alistair Lynch is him swinging and missing with Shane Wakelin in the 2004 yeah, grade. That, <laughs> <laughs> that stands out in my mind like nothing else. Like nothing else. What, what about the weekend, Danny? We we obviously got over the line. We um... yeah, it was awesome. I mean, what I I love Cody Waitman. I said uh, I texted a few mates uh, during the Swans Giants game, just watching Papley, and uh, Papley is one of my favourite players to watch. Who's not a bulldog because he he's such a pest. And what's what I love about him is he annoys teams that I don't like. So he annoys the Giants. He annoys the Hawks. <laughs> And it just that, that that really makes me smile. And I, I just sent a, f- a message to a few WhatsApp groups, going, "I hope Cody Waitman becomes our Papley. I could really see him doing that role." And then he did. He got into it. I love that. Uh, like you know, he got four free kicks. Two of them were absolute dead set certainties. The other ones, yeah, the umpires probably got them wrong, but it's not Cody's fault. He's not a diver in the way that like Alex Rance was or Joe Danaher. He's like he's little and he's going for the ball under guys' elbows, so he's getting hit in the head and getting rewarded yeah. for it. No, yeah. I agree. He's got the Toby McLean, Shane. He's got the uh, yes. the shoulder shrug. The, uh, oh, the t- I don't think he's got that much. To- Toby's really, better at it than Toby. Than really Cody. did some mayo on that for a few years there. <laughs> can, you, can you remember, Shane? Um, so when we first Toby got to the club at the same period of time, and Toby was immaculate at this drawing the high free kick, and more than once teammates of his got caught high in match simulation. And verbally abused him. Oh yeah, I mate. I remember. Roberts even even kicked him in the like kicked him in the butt. Not very hard, but like. It was, it and was, I remember <laughs> wanting to fight him too. He was, yeah. <laughs> and Toby's been on the on the show twice, and he's uh, he's only double up guest, and we love him. But, mate, he's trying to create he's trying to create enemies harder than anyone I've ever seen when he first got to the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, so, I, I think Bigsy's going to be a double up guest. Absolutely. <laughs> there is a lot of listener mail to get to, but before we do that, we do ev- all. You know, I'm not. Sh- I'm sure you're not surprised about this, Big Z. But 90 percent of the listener mail we got is about the hashtag Never Forget goal. Why, why do they call it that, by the way? I'd only sort of picked that up this week. Um. Oh, the. Uh, I think a bloke did. I not think a bloke did a little video, and it sort of went a bit viral. I think with that hashtag and just um, okay. But yeah, that's where that comes from. But what do you got for me? Well, I'm just, I'm just gonna re- I watched it. I rewatched it just a few minutes before we came on. I just transcribed what happened for all those. We all know you did great things, but okay. So you gathered the. There's there's seven minutes left in the grand final. One point in it. You, the, you gather the ball at half forward. You're tackled by Papley. We were just talking about him. Um, possibly should have been pinged for incorrect disposal. By the way, you went to kick it and miss. Anyway, <laughs> let well, him play. Gathered by Jake Lloyd. <laughs> Uh, Lloyd goes to hand pass it, but you smother his hand pass. You already back up. You're there. It's gathered by Dunkley, hand pass it to McRae, who's tackled by an unknown swan, I think, later, possibly. Uh, hand pass it back to Dunkley, who hand pass to space, gathered by uh, Mills. You tackle him, Bigsy. You bring him to ground. <laughs> he, by the way, attempts to duck the tackle, but your tackle is so perfect. Oh, I remember this. You way. have him... Right below the neck. It's like you've any higher, yeah, you're getting pinged. But you've just got it absolutely millimetre perfect. Uh, you have it for a microsecond before you tackle by Xavier Richards. You give the ball to Cordy, not a hand pass. You literally hand it to him. He touches it, mate. <laughs> takes it off you. <laughs> Doof goes to have a shot, but he's bumped by the same swan, I think, later. Not Laidler. sure. Laidler. 
Laidlow, is that it? So what? I don't care about Sydney players. Yeah, who's that? <laughs> he goes to ground. It's taken by Caleb, who's tackled by like two or three swans. Hand pass to Tom Boyd. Goes to have a snapshot, smothered by Jake Lloyd. Jake uh, Stringer, Biggs. actually, I think you'll find smother that one, mate. Oh, really? Yeah. The yeah. camera angle makes it look like a Sydney player, but it's yeah. Stringer in the Stringy, way. Oh, Stringy, by the way. Stringy, he tried to get a hand on. He got kicked him into his back. <laughs> Did you see the uh, stat? Jake Stringer is the first ever Bulldog to yep. the first ever player to play in five consecutive Bulldogs finals wins. Yeah, I did see that. I did see that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, player. <laughs> um, so the ball's up in the air. Biggs, you, did you at this point think you could have marked it, even though it was clearly touched? Because it looks like you go for a grab. Yeah, oh mate. I'd, to be honest, at that point, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> That's all right. You grab it, you gather it, and you're tackled all in about point two of a second. Oh mate. You know, actually, you know what? I remember grabbing that, thinking I'm going to win this game. <laughs> <laughs> I just got <laughs> this is me. I wasn't even meant to be up that end, mate. I was meant to be at the other end, and I remember I got told I was coming off, so I just ran. I was just like, I'm going to kick a fucking goal here. Mate. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to win this game. That is the greatest quote I've heard in a long time. <laughs> Seven minutes to go. The backman's had 10, cra- 10 cracks, and then he goes, I'm going to win this game. <laughs> oh, God, it cracks me up. All right, so the ball's then gathered by Mills. He's tackled by Case, uh, Clay Smith. His, uh, uh, Mills hand passes it, but it's intercepted by Dunks, who hand passes it to McRae, who kicks the ball into the centre, where Toby McLean drops an absolute sitter, but pick and gathers and goals. Now, all of that I've described happens in 44 seconds. Jesus. That's, it's like, it is, look, you did win us the game, mate. That is just oh. absolute brilliance. And they wonder uh, why we can't play the game anymore, Shane. There's so no, many no. things happen in 44 mate, seconds. I'm short of, I'm short of breath now, mate. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Well, I, as the fan, I, I genuinely thank you. Let's uh, go a few questions here. Well, the first one relates to this. It's from Glenn. He just wants to know, how many beers has Pico bought you, considering he swanned in for the glory at the end there? <laughs> you know what? I, Pico has actually hit me up a couple of times over beer, but it just hasn't really eventuated, I think, with COVID and all that. But So the answer is none. So come on, Pico. <laughs> Well, when this is all out, we're doing a live review of the 2016 prelim. Would you like to come along to that? Oh, is that That's, like a what, like a sit and sit and chat? It, it, like it'll, a be at, it'll be at a pub, mate. So, do you want to come? I was, I was going to say, yeah, Joel, where's the fine print? Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> Once we can do that, that'll be that'll be there. And by the way, uh, Boydie, that I spoke to the to the lawyers uh, at at Channel Ten where I do some work, and he said, "Yeah, you can't show the game, but you can review it." Mm. Ooh, so that's react. what we're doing. We're reviewing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, some of these questions have already been answered. Uh, Harry, a few other people want to know why the early retirement. Your hips are rooted. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Amongst other things, you know, a bit of fellow in love with it, but yeah, it was mainly because we were. Walking car crashes, Tommy, wasn't it? <laughs> it didn't help. I wasn't, it didn't help. I, I didn't help. It's hard to enjoy the game when you're as you, as you describe a walking car crash. But yeah, I, I, I wasn't enjoying it much. I didn't 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 think you were either. We yeah, loved, no. I, I, I don't know about you. I still loved the boys and loved all that, but it was just yeah. Yeah, I'm the that, same, mate. Yeah, that was the good part, the one good part of that stage. That's all right. well, and you, Martin Flanagan's book talks about how you were one of the few players who could lift the mood of the team, even when they just had a loss. And uh, my mate Chris went up to possibly the, one of the worst games uh, in recent Bulldogs history. Round one, I think it's 2018. Uh, we go up to Canberra, lose to the Giants, oh, yeah. getting yeah. thumped. Liber does his knee. It's just an absolute disaster zone and he said uh, he got on the flight uh, later that day or early the next day and the, and all the Bulldogs were there and uh, everyone was solemn as hell but you were still trying to crack jokes <laughs> until another fan yelled out shut up Bigsy <laughs> I was going to say as well I must, it's pretty good that I was cracking jokes because I reckon that game really ended my career they said, oh really yeah <laughs> They sat on me and bashed me to a pulp, and I didn't want to play footy ever again. But I was <laughs> oh, that was a bad day on all fronts. I've watched on from that game. I wasn't even there, and it was bad. Uh, 
Jimmy wants to know, uh, have Frio signed you yet? Um, I think that's in reference to me getting in a long sleeve jumper on the other the other day. Um, they haven't hit me up. Um, I'm pretty lucky they haven't because, <laughs> like we were saying, Tommy, before, I haven't moved much. I'm far out. If I took this big, I saw a big baggy jumper on under this, pretty good padding. I'll tell you what, Tommy. <laughs> I got a few mates who play at uh, North Heidelberg uh, where you went after the Bulldogs. And apparently the story that the, they say is you said, I'm only going to play, you know, premiership AFL players come to play. for. They're also the Bulldogs, North Heidelberg. Uh, he's going to come to the kennel, but only if his mate can play. And they're all expecting you to bring some <laughs> fat, idiot, old mate who's just some guy you went to school with. He's better than me. <laughs> he was be- apparently one of the best players I've ever had. <laughs> And yeah, you you were apparently enjoying life very hard then. I so, <laughs> uh, what was his name? Uh, Morgs. Yeah, Morgs. Morgs. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Real real that, name? That's, you... that's the chef from the yeah, Instagram. The chef. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Full circle, mate. Famous, Full the circle. famous Morgs. Ah, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's nothing else to we. Can, I think that that ends it quite well. Yeah, um, Shane, oh, I'm going to give a couple of shout outs. Shane in the chat to uh, <laughs> Shane uh, the to uh, Vicky, who's one of the nanas from the uh, cheer squad. Uh, I want to give a shout out to her because it was my birthday last Thursday, and you know you're in lockdown. It's all a bit depressing. Uh, she sent me a video of her singing "Happy Birthday" to me, which was lovely. Uh, especially considering the fact that all she was wearing was a couple of strategically placed bulldog scarves. <laughs> Donald. It's, it's what well, she, happy, happy, It was happy, genuinely happy, hilarious. Happy 30th, Don. Well done, mate. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, also um, the other big story is the Toby Green uh, hassling uh, umpire Stevic. Uh, no, I really like umpire Stevic because he umpired the 2016 Grand Final. So I think we should uh, – he should have got – 20 weeks. Yeah, I agree. That. I I don't know. I don't agree. He said he Toby didn't do anything. <laughs> 3 weeks. Yeah, but mate. Out of that. I mate, that that so uh, reeked of a goon coming around to Stevic's house and go, "Hey, you see when Toby, you when the when the jury asked you what did Toby do, you didn't nothing. He didn't do nothing to you." I I I will say one thing. I haven't seen an issue like that polarize the community as quickly as it did in a while. Tom Bug who um is the next Obviously, teammate of mine and Toby's made a lot of noise on Twitter for about four hours from LA trying to rev everyone up, and he did it successfully. <laughs> really? You haven't seen an issue divide the, the country? You have done well no, to avoid no, the media the, there, Boydie. The, the game, Danny. The oh, game. The game. <laughs> I was about to say as well, that and your bloody geometrical whatever you didn't understand before. What was that? <laughs> Geopolitical. <laughs> there's there's only two questions we ask here. One is, do you think Boydie deserved the Norm Smith, and should Scotland have another independence referent referendum? Uh, no, and yes, in no particular order. I'll let you <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. That's the answer. That's the answer. Thanks, Shane. That was unbelievable, mate. Thank you for having us, Danny. Do you got anything to shout out at the moment, or you're all good? No, nah, well, you know, there's no gigs on, so uh, please, when when it's done, uh, come come see a gig. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there, and bring me to the pub. Come on. <laughs> oh yeah, you're coming, mate. You are absolutely part of our review. Once we're allowed to do live shows, it's going to be brilliant. Today's episode was proudly brought to you by Eight Star Energy, creating energy for the future and power you can count on. Follow them on Facebook. Fast way.